In this chapter, we are going to talk about availability check. Availability is a very big topic. We are going to cover it in two parts. This chapter deals with the basics of availability check. So topics like what is stock, how stock is replenished, how stock goes down, what is lead time, how to configure lead times in the material master, so on and so forth. The actual configuration behind availability check, like checking group, checking rule, etc. We'll deal with them in the next chapter. Where did we see this picture? In the scheduling chapter, remember? We talked about the material and how lead times are calculated. If stock is available, how delivery date is calculated and if stock is not available, SAP looks at the strategy and finds out when the goods can be available. Now let's look at this step, check stock a bit closer. What does it really mean? When do you check the stock? So when you check the stock, all SAP is looking at is what is called the ATP quantity. ATP quantity. ATP stands for available to promise. Available to promise. ATP. So what is this ATP? It is the quantity that's available that we can promise delivery to the customer. So if the customer asks for 100 pieces, we need to have 100 pieces to promise delivery. Right? So how is this ATP quantity computed? It is the current stock, which is stock at hand, meaning how much stock we have at hand right now plus inward movement of goods. What is this inward movement of goods? When we expect goods to move in, it is categorized as inward movement of goods. In the same way, if we are expecting goods to be moved out, it is called outward movement of goods. This could be in the future, meaning the ATP quantity is always as of a particular date. So as of today, we can say the ATP quantity is the stock we have at hand, simple, which is the current stock. As of tomorrow, what could happen? We could receive stock or we could deliver stock to the customer. So, the ATP quantity as of tomorrow is the current stock plus what's going to come in tomorrow and what's going to leave our stock tomorrow for delivery. So let's zoom in a little bit further. Inward movement of stock. So, say on January 1st, the quantity of stock that's available in the warehouse is 100. On February 1st, you're expecting that certain purchase orders will be placed with a vendor to come in. Say you placed an order sometime in Jan, and the order is expected to come in on Feb 1st. How much is it for? Say 50. Now, you don't have that 50 right now. You don't have it until Feb 1st. So, like we discussed, this is an example of expected inward movement of goods. But for example, the vendor might not turn up. 
right? It's 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 an expected inward movement. It's not confirmed, meaning it, there's no guarantee that the vendor might turn up with the goods. The yellow bar is called a planned order. What's a planned order? A planned order typically results in an order to produce goods as opposed to procure. So it says, how much of stock are we going to produce? If we start right now, we might not be able to make it today. It might take a month, two months, depending on the nature of the product. For example, a laptop can be assembled in a couple of days. A car on the other hand might take you know five or ten days. A big power generator might take hundred days because it's a very custom built product. And again these are expected plan or production orders. Expected. So things might not materialize. For example um, the plant or the workshop might break down. So inward movement of goods generally comprises of these two things. Purchase orders coming in from vendors or planned orders converted to production orders in case of internal manufacturing. External, internal. So these are the only modes in which you get goods. You either procure them or produce them. So as of Jan 1st, what is the total ATP stock? 100. And today, if you project into Feb 1st, you'll have 100 plus 50. That is 150 in ATP stock. And as of today, if you think of March 1st, you'll have 100 plus 50 plus 75. That's 225 in ATP stock. So this is how you look at ATP. Next, we got to look at outward movement of goods. What is an outward movement? So these are situations where the stock leaves the warehouse. So previously we have seen situations where stock comes into the warehouse, either via procurement or production. So this is when stock leaves your warehouse. So when can goods leave the warehouse? When there is an order and when there is a delivery. Both these transactions will reduce stock from the warehouse. Well, yes and no, we'll see about it. We understand the delivery will reduce the stock. Because once the delivery is created and the PGA is done, the stock will go out. But when a sales order is created, let's say a sales order is created for material M01, quantity of 100. It's just created today. Does it mean the stock will go down? Yes and no. Yes, because the quantity of 100 will be reserved you know concept of reservation right so the hundred quantity will be reserved and so the amount of it is not available for the next order which will come down maybe today or tomorrow and I say no because the goods have not yet been physically delivered only the order has been created maybe the delivery is tomorrow so physically the stock is still there but since there has been a sales order, the respective quantity is reserved and it's not made available for other orders. So a reservation is more or less like a, um, a soft uh, hold on the goods. Whereas if you actually deliver the goods, they are gone. So this is outward movement of stock. Now, if we combine both these things together, you get the availability. Like we said, ATP quantity is current stock plus, 
plant the seed? You see, I'm changing the words receipt to plant receipts. Why? Because these are planned or expected. They're not actuals. And the same with issues. An order might be scheduled to be delivered tomorrow. But the person loading the truck might not come in. The forklift might break down. The customer might just hold off on the delivery for a couple of days. Anything could happen. So that's why we're calling it planned, not expected. Just to illustrate this point, I've put up a graphic here. Everything in green represents the stock in the warehouse. And boxes in blue represent the ATP quantity. Say there is a sales order on Jan 1st for immediate delivery for a quantity say 250. So what happens to the stock in the warehouse? Does it go down? No, not yet. But the ATP quantity will go down. Why? It's a reservation because the quantity of 250 is blocked. But on the day when the delivery needs to happen, the actual physical stock is withdrawn from the warehouse, right? And the quality of the stock in the warehouse goes down. Similarly, on Feb 1st, there's a purchase order created with the vendor. The delivery date is March 1st, say. Does it increase the physical stock? No. But it increases the ATP stock. But not right away. It increases it as of March 1st. And on March 1st, when the goods are actually delivered by the vendor to the warehouse, the actual stock in the warehouse goes up. So this is the core concept behind ATP. We have not done the configuration. We haven't seen the master data required for ATP. Nothing. We just understood the basics of ATP. Now, when we are trying to understand ATP, we saw a couple of other things. Like, how long it takes for the goods to reach the warehouse from our vendor? And how long it takes to receive the goods in the warehouse? We're going to answer these two questions now. Consider this data as master data for ATP. The first piece of data is replenishment lead time. What is replenishment lead time? It is the amount of time it takes to get the material ready and available for the customer. Meaning, if you don't have the material, how long does it take to make it available to the customer? There are different ways in which this can be calculated. In case you are producing the goods, then the replenishment lead time or RLT is current date plus production time plus GR processing time. These timings are all set in the material master. You can view those settings here. Don't worry about understanding all the different views shown here. Not very important. Just understand that they are set in the purchasing and MRP views. Now, there is another way to calculate RLT. It is specified in the MRP3 view. It's called Total Replenishment Lead Time. Now, when you can't break the replenishment lead time into production time or GR processing time, you can use this parameter to directly specify the total replenishment lead time. So it's a combination of production time plus GR processing time. If the strategy is to procure the goods externally, meaning we're not manufacturing that particular material, but procuring it from a vendor. In that case, how is the RLT or replenishment lead time computed? 
again there are three parameters the first parameter is purchasing lead time which says how long does it take to convert a purchase requisition to a purchase order now why is this important when MRP produces purchase requisitions you got to go back to the MRP chapter to understand you know why MRP produces purchase requisitions I think it's in the schedule lines chapter so when MRP produces purchase requisitions they're not automatically converted to purchase orders somebody has to manually validate the purchase requisition and then convert it to a purchase order now you know that whenever there is manual intervention it's bound to take some time so the time that you give the purchasing officer to think and react is called the purchasing lead time so where is this set up it is set up at the plant level so you go to SPRO IMG MM purchasing you can set up the purchasing processing time there so the amount of time required to convert the purchase requisition to a purchase order can be configured at the plant level the next parameter is the GR processing time goods receipt processing time it is set up in the purchasing view of the material master most of the master data parameters related to MRP are set up in the material master that's good news because you don't have to go here and there everything is there in the material master yes there are some parameters like you know the plant parameter that we are talking about for which you have to go to SPRO but for the most part they're all set up in the material master what is this GR processing time GR stands for goods receipt so this parameter dictates how long it takes for the folks in the warehouse to receive and store the goods in the warehouse take this example when you get a FedEx delivery at home all you have to do is just use a knife open the box and that's it you have the goods in your hand on the other hand imagine the vendor sends you say a thousand bags of sugar in a truck to your warehouse what happens now your team has to be ready to, to re receive the goods maybe they need to use a forklift or something to unload the bags place them in the staging area count them put them away in the respective storage location update the stock in SAP maybe do quality checks there are so many things that need to be done it's not a huge amount of time it could be half a day one day but still it's a parameter that needs to be counted and the next big parameter is the planned delivery time this means how long it takes for the delivery to happen meaning if you ask the vendor for a particular quantity of goods your vendor might take five days so five days is your planned delivery time now if you add up these three parameters you get the replenishment lead time in case of external procurement and in case of internal procurement you can use the total replenishment lead time or you can use the breakup production time plus year processing time 